Praise God. Praise God. Welcome, everyone, wherever you are, in the United States and in the other nations. We welcome you to the online church. Praise God. And we just give God the glory and the honor and praise. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. It is so good to assemble with you and to call upon the name of the Lord. Praise God. We spent a little bit of time listening to that mighty song by Richard Smallwood. And um, praise God. He's, uh, God has used him mightily throughout the whole world to bless people with his songs. And that song, there's the healing song. And there's a lot of great information in that song. It is soothing to the soul. Uh, you could listen to that all night long. If you can't sleep, if you can't sleep, get Richard Smallwood's CD uh, by, with, along with Vision that they made in Detroit, Michigan some, some years ago. You can't sleep, play Richard Smallwood. You'll get to sleep. Your soul will be at ease. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, here's a shout out to everybody out there. Thank you for joining up with the online church today, and we give God the praise. Our purpose is to present Jesus Christ to this world. Our purpose is to present Jesus Christ to the world. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And we do this via the Internet. The Internet, ladies and gentlemen, it's the new frontier. It's the new frontier. And that's what I wrote in my book, the online commission, uh, the online church and the great commission. I said the Internet is, uh, the online church is the new frontier. We're going to reach places where the brick and mortar church cannot uh, travel. And people laughed at me when I wrote that. But uh, uh, they're not laughing now because many of the churches, the brick and mortar churches, are closed. And then there are many churches today who are in confusion. Fellowships don't know whether they should go back to the brick-and-mortar building. Should we assemble? Should we take a risk and assemble? And then we've got a lot of pastors saying, hey, if we don't bring the people in to, to assemble, we're liable to lose the church, lose the property, lose the building, because the money ain't coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, it ain't about the money. It's about worshiping God. You find that place where you can worship God in spirit and in truth, free from politics, free from what he thinks or she thinks, and free from uh, the devil's persecution, and you find that place and you hide yourself in Jesus and you worship there. Praise God. If it's a box in your attic, go into that box in your attic. If it's in your basement, go there. You find that place where you can worship the Lord. It is not all about assembling and seeing how many people, what's the head count for today? How many people showed up? How many cars in the parking lot? Did you count the cars in the parking lot? How many people passed through the doors? No, it ain't about that, ladies. That's, that's religion, and religion stinks, but God is a spirit, and God wants to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. He's looking for a people who will worship him in spirit and in truth peace and, and in truth praise God well bless God we thank God there is a bomb in Gilead there is a bomb what's a bomb Pastor Carter well let me give you something simple it's not what uh, Joseph said to Myrtle years ago Joseph said to Myrtle Myrtle they're bumming Gilead they're bumming Gilead next thing you know they're gonna be bumming Jerusalem then they're gonna bum Oh, uh, Paris, and they're going to bum London. They're, they'll be bumming New York before us, us all over. Myrtle, they're, they're, they're bumming Gilead. <laughs> no, ladies and gentlemen, the song says there is a bomb in Gilead. The easiest, uh, most practical thing that I know, and I'm going to show this to you right now. I've got a, a brand new um, um, chapstick. Florence chap Chappies. ease it is. I got a chap ease. See the chap ease. I'm holding up to the camera. Chap ease. This is a bomb. Okay, if your lips are chap, hmm, do this. Mm -hmm. Rub your lips. Rub some on your lips. Okay, and 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 do like 
Do it like the ladies do. Just take your finger and rub it in or be like Mama. I remember, I remember Mama. She'd take a napkin and <laughs> Okay. But this is a balm. It's a, it's, a, it's a soothing salve. It's a healing. It's an ointment. Okay. There is a balm in Gilead. That's what that song is saying. In other words, there's healing. There's healing for whatever ails you. If you're sick, there's a cure. If, if your family's sick, there is a cure. If your church is sick, there is a balm that can heal and deliver you. If the nation's sick, there is a balm to cure and heal the nations. And we're going to talk about that balm today. No, Myrtle, uh, 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 they're, they're bumming Gilead. No, it's not that, Joseph. It's not that. It's not that kind of balm. We're talking about the healing balm, the healing anointing, the healing ointment that comes when we seek the Lord. We're gonna. I'll be preaching in a few moments about uh, the topic on the topic. Seek my face. Seek my face. Here's what I'd like to do. Praise God. I give a shout out to every one of you. But we're gonna ask. Um, we're going to ask Pastor Sam Gale from Wilmington, Delaware, to lead us in prayer. Would you do that, please, Pastor Sam? Yes, sir. Thank you. Let us look to the Lord for a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you this morning. We thank God for having you step up, God. We thank you for our help and strength. Lord, we come this morning with no other reason than to lift you up, give you, give you honor, and give you glory. We thank you for this day that we've never seen before, how the new mercies that you bestowed upon us, God, how you bless us, even at this hour. We ask that we enter into your word, God, as we come to supper this table, that the words that we hear will be food for our souls, that we'll be able to dine on it, God, chew and meditate on it, God, that it will enrich us, God, and make us come to a place that we know you even the better. Now, bless your man servant as he, as he serves us, God, as he speaks up there for the Lord. Bless everyone who's able to hear God, and bless us as we have fallen in our lives. We give you glory, and we thank you right now for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sam. That's Pastor Sam Gale from the uh, Living Water Ministries in Wilmington, Delaware. He's assistant to the pastor, and, and the pastor is Dr. Jean Bratton. And it's so wonderful. Dr. Jean Bratton is so wise. She's a woman of wisdom, great wisdom. And uh, she's saying, hey, we're not going to assemble our, our church family yet until we hear from the Lord. And even though the president said, go back to church, y'all y'all going back out there Sunday morning. Y'all going out there. Well, a lot of them, you know, they're, they're, the, their God has spoken. The president has spoken. So y'all going back out there Sunday morning. It's all right. And the numbers uh, from the coronavirus are still rising. But Dr. Gene Bratton says, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to seek the Lord first on this matter. And so... Uh, she encouraged her, uh, even her assistant pastors, and, and we've got Pastor uh, uh, Minister Loretta Jackson. She's uh, from the uh, Living Waters Fellowship, and we've got others, and she has her, her whole church coming on. That's a joy. Would more, would to God that more pastors would do this. Not that we're looking for numbers, but we're looking for fellowships getting the same word under the same anointing, experiencing the bomb in Gilead. And so we give a shout-out to the Living Waters Fellowship in Wilmington, Delaware, under the leadership of Dr. Gene Bratton. And if we can get a, a Dr. Gene Bratton to uh, come on right now, we're going to ask her to read the scripture for us. And that's 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 11. Dr. Gene, let's see if we can hear your voice. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Praise God. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Oh, great. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Apostle Carter, um, Dr. Carter, and everyone out there. Good morning, and be blessed as we read the Word of God. I will be reading from 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 to 11, as I have been asked by Apostle Carter, and it reads from the King James Version. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, 
And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amaz, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, but thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember how now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took it and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, This sign shall thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow of the of for the shadow to go down on ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. Blessed is the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Gene Bratton. We heard you well. You read it well. And we praise God. Praise God. Thank God for a good, strong reader. Thank God for all of you. Praise God. Today we're going to be looking at a message, Seek My Face. Seek My Face. Praise God. It's a message. And Father, we just bless you and praise you and thank you again. Thanks, for Pastor Sam Gale leading us to the throne of grace. Thank you for Dr. Gene Bratton for uh, reading the word of God. And thank you for each and every one who is in attendance and their families and for those who are gathered around their computers and around their phones. And we thank you for people all over the world, Lord, as people assemble uh, together in small groups just to hear these messages. We thank you for our friends in Kenya. We thank you for our friends in Cameroon. We thank you for our friends in Switzerland. We thank you in Sweden. We thank you for our friends in the Caribbean. We thank you, Father, for people all over the world, and we bless you. We praise you. We thank you, Father, for those who spy on this ministry. We pray that as they spy, they will get saved. We praise God because the word of God uh, wants to touch even our enemies and our foes. And we bless you, Lord. We thank you, Father. And we come in Jesus' name asking that you forgive us of our sins, God. Cleanse us of all iniquity in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I thank God there's a message. There is a word from the Lord. And the word of God today is seek my face. God is saying seek my face. And um, let me give you a little bit of background on this message. You know, we're, we're in the face of a, a, a pandemic, a world epidemic called a pandemic where people are dying all over the world in mass numbers. And yet, even as the numbers are rising, there's pressure on governments to get people back out there working. You go to work, go to work, get back out there. And, and uh, we need to keep our economy running. And then there are individuals and, and, and many of you may be listening. Your job is threatening. You can't get paid if you can't work and uh and so uh many of our, our people are caught in uh, 
uh, between a rock and a hard place. You know, the government saying, get out there. And, 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 and you know there's danger out there. But you're also saying, look, I don't have food on the table and don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. And I've got to get out there. And so uh, the, what shall I do? And so there are many people who are in a strait, in, in a strait, uh, in a fix, don't know what to do. But the answer, my friends, is in Jesus Christ. And as I went before the Lord last night, uh, I prayed and prayed and prayed. And then even in the middle of the night, I still my soul was still restless. And uh, I, I believed God wanted to speak to me. So uh, I got up around 2 o'clock in the morning. I must have spent about four hours in prayer. In, in prayer. Uh, yes, I slept a little bit. And I came back out and, 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 and went into prayer. And, and there was a heavy burden upon me. For not only for me and my family, but for you and your family and for this nation and for the churches and for the world. And I felt like I felt like I was Habakkuk or somebody, you know. I felt like the burden of the Lord was upon me and, 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 and seemed like I'm standing in the gap for a lot of people. And so God began to speak to me and he spoke to me and he kept speaking to me, kept speaking to me, kept speaking to me and about what he's going to do. And ladies and gentlemen, the picture is not a really bright one for America and for the nation. I'm going to say this again. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be a prophet of doom and gloom. Uh, but Lord, Lord, what you're saying to me looks like it's going to get worse and worse. And God said, yes, it's going to get worse and worse. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't change channels. Uh, don't uh, uh, go over to uh, 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 hear somebody who's going to stroke you and tell you how nice you are, how pretty you are, how, how nice your hair looks and all that. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have time for that foolishness, but I must preach what God said. I said, Lord, what is it you want to say to me? Why is my heart so heavy? What is this burden upon me? And the Lord said, it's not only on you, it's on others. I've got others standing in the gap just like you. And so I come before you, ladies and gentlemen, with this message, seek my face. God is saying, tell the people, tell the people. When you go before the people, tell them to seek my face. Tell them that it's not going to get easy. It's not going to get any easier. It's going to get worse. And if people can't stand this uh, thing right now where there's lockdowns and shutdowns and, and learning how to do without and coming under harsh discipline, if they can't take it now, they won't be able to stand it. But God said, tell them to seek my face. Tell the preachers before you run out there and open your churches up again, because uh, you need to have the numbers. You've got to have those numbers coming in. You've got to have those offerings coming in. Tell them, seek my face. Well, the president said, Lord, that uh, uh, they can go out there and, and, and it's all right. It's all because the church is essential. Yes, God says the church is essential, but, but the, the president is not God, ladies and gentlemen. He won't even wear a mask. Uh, 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 how much can you trust what he says? Uh, look at his record. He's got a record. He's been lying to you for three long years, and he's going to keep on lying until he gets saved. Well, he's already saved. A lot of people in the online church think he's already saved. Well, you shall know them by their fruits. When you see love and when you hear a, a word of love and, and a consistent word of love, then you'll know that he's saved. But your, word, your place is not to judge him, but your place is to tell the people that uh, they're to stop depending on their government they're to stop trusting in their government, stop trusting in their religious leaders, and stop trusting in their political leaders, and to seek the face of God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what this message is all about today, seek the face of God. And so this is what I heard God saying all, all, almost for four hours, just pouring in my spirit about how 
this coronavirus is just the beginning of things to come. It's just the beginning. If people can't take this, they won't be able to take the next thing because there are more, uh, 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 more devious things coming down the road. And I'm saying, well, Lord, why is this happening? Why is this happening, Lord God? And God says, because the people have turned their backs to me. The people have turned their backs to me. Even the church, God says, has turned his, their backs to him. God says to tell the people, I will save a remnant. I will save a remnant. I will save those who are truly mine. So don't turn back, the Lord is saying. Don't turn back and don't be afraid. God said tell the people, don't be afraid. Yes, even worse things are coming. And, and for them not to be afraid but to trust in me with all their heart. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time. This is the day. The Lord is saying this is the time, the most important time in history uh, to seek the face of the Lord. This day is the most important day of your life to seek the face of the Lord because we're on a crossroad, ladies and gentlemen. We're on a crossroad. And when we cross this intersection, there are even worse things that we're going to face. More, uh, there will be worse challenges that will come against us. And many will, will cave in. Many will, will, will turn like, melt like wax. Many will, will just give up. But God is saying to you, don't give up. Don't give up. Now, I know there are people listening to me saying, oh, man, hey, he's just a preacher. He don't know what he's saying. He's just trying to deceive you. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have time to deceive you. Woe unto me if I deceive you. I've got to be true to God and faithful to God. I must say what God says while there is time. Ladies and gentlemen, time is running out, and as time runs out, even worse things are going to come against us. And only those who will endure until the end shall be saved. I'm going to say that again to you. Only those who endure until the end shall be saved. Well, Pastor Carl, I get tired of hearing just these warning messages, these warning messages. Well, that's what I do. That's what I do, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. Somebody's got to warn the people because what we're getting from the White House, what we're getting from the Congress, what we're getting from the news uh, broadcasters is not a warning. How many of them, how many of them are saying turn to the Lord? Well, the president say, he said, uh, open the churches. Well, the president's doing that as an expedient thing. It's to keep the economy going, ladies and gentlemen. Can't you see it? Uh, well, he saved. He said, uh, go to church. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the devil even says, go to church. The devil's saying to a lot of you, go on out there. Go on out there and get sick. But you've got to make a decision, ladies and gentlemen, whose report will you believe? You're going to believe the president. You're going to believe the, the preacher. You're going to leave, believe uh, uh, Dr. So-and-so. Or you're going to believe uh, uh, CNN. You're going to believe TBN. Or whose report will you believe? Isaiah says, who has re believed our report? And the best report, ladies and gentlemen, is for you to seek God's face. The best thing you and I can do is to seek God's face. Yes, there is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick souls. And many of our souls are sin-sick because we're hearing this voice and we're hearing this voice. Mama says this. Grandmama says that. The president says this. Uh, 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 the, 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 the DJ says this, and, and, and the pastor says this, and whose report will you believe? So what we have, ladies and gentlemen, is a world full of people who are confused. They're bombarded on every end, and we know from the Scripture that Satan is the author of confusion. But Jesus said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but 
by me. And so we see many people running around in confusion. Shall we start up schools in September? Shall we open our colleges? Or shall we have online courses? Uh, shall we open the dormitories? Uh, how long shall we keep the dormitories open? Shall we have a semester of classes and then send people home in the wintertime? The colleges don't know what to do. The government doesn't know what to do. Government officials are running around like chickens with their heads cut off. Shall we open the churches? Shall we open the, the, the states? Uh, well, the states say, no, they're not going to open. Well, I'm going to override the states, the president says. There's confusion, ladies and gentlemen. There's confusion. And Satan is having a ball. Satan is having a ball. Well, you say, well, what's, what's God doing with all this? Why is God allowing all this to happen? Ladies and gentlemen, Satan has a green light right now. He's got a green light. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's a ruler of this world system, and he's having the time of his life. He's having the time of his life because now is the time where many believers are being tested and tried. Satan is trying to destroy the church, destroy the believers. I'm not talking about the building at 3rd and Main Street. I'm not talking about the building where you assemble. I'm talking about the church, those who call themselves the body of Christ those who are blood washed, those who have sold their souls, uh, sold out, those who have committed their lives to Jesus Christ. There's a testing, ladies and gentlemen, and the Bible says the testing of our faith worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And so uh, for every believer, if you're a true believer, you must hold on. I encourage you to hold on. Help is on the way. There is a bomb in Gilead to save the sin sick soul. There's a bomb in Gilead to save this nation. There's a bomb in Gilead. There is a cure for the coronavirus. There's a cure for COVID-19, COVID-20, COVID-21, and all his brothers and children and grandchildren are coming down the pike. And God's people, as we stand, and having done all, stand in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, ladies and gentlemen. And God is giving every one of us, every one of us, a chance to seek his face, to spend less time uh, at the movies, spend less time at the mall, spend less time at the beach, spend less time uh, shopping, spend less time uh, uh, at the bar or the nightclub, spend less time uh, 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 in pleasure and seek the face of God. And ladies and gentlemen, those of you who will seek the face of God, you're going to get blessed. Those who think this is just a joke are going to be in for a big surprise. This is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. This is no joke. These are the last days. God is saying to us, get your house in order. Get your house in order. God said to me, and, and ladies and gentlemen, it almost blew my mind, probably did, last night when he said, the America is being judged. I am judging America, God said. I am judging America. America has sinned so much and got away with so many sins and caused so many other nations to sin. God says, now I am judging America. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to hear this on ABC News. You're not going to hear this on uh, Fox News. You're not going to hear this on CNN. You might not even hear it on TBN. Uh, a lot of pastors are afraid to preach this kind of uh, message. But America, God said, is under judgment. And the nations are under judgment because many nations pattern themselves after America. Ladies and gentlemen, God said, we are under judgment at this very moment. America is going to be judged. God said to me, a lot of people are going to die. A lot of people are going to die. A lot of people will, will be confused. Many will not know where to run, where to hide. God said, but those who seek my face, God says, those who apply this the scripture I gave uh, uh, to Solomon, the word that I gave, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 
Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. I wish, I wish, I wish I could give you a nice little beautiful uh, sermon that strokes you, makes you feel good. I wish, but the hand of the Lord is upon me, ladies and gentlemen. The hand of the Lord is upon me and upon the online church, the Back to Basics Ministries online church, to preach what thus saith the Lord. God said, America is under judgment. God says, I am judging this nation. God said, too many. And, and the Lord laid on me uh, 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 last night. He said, the cries of the unborn babies have reached my ears. The millions of babies being aborted every year. The millions of babies, God said, who are being aborted every year. And the government says abortion clinics are still essential. They're essential. They can open up. The cries of the unborn babies, God said, the cries, the sound of their cries have reached my ears. God says the stench of America's sins. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. The Lord spoke to me this morning. said the stench of the sins of America, the stench is greater than the stench that came up from Sodom and Gomorrah. The stench of the sins of America have reached my nostrils, and, 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 and the stench is sickening me, God says. I'm tired of the stench. America is being judged, ladies and gentlemen, and, 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 and while people are looking for church as usual, open doors of church, make sure we get their tithes, make sure you bring your money, and y'all come and let's have church as usual, uh, 35 minutes for the announcements, 10 minutes for the, 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 the sermon, no time for prayer, and, and go on out and do what you want to do, and we'll see you all next Sunday. The stench of religion, the stench is reaching my nostrils, God says, and I can't stand it anymore. How long will I strive with this nation, the Lord is saying. Man, I sound like a prophet today. How long will I strive with this nation, the Lord is saying. And so God is saying, seek my face, seek my face. And there are so many passages in Scripture, ladies and gentlemen, in which God has used men and women to seek his face and many are uh, on behalf of their nation on behalf of their tribe on behalf of their families uh they stopped what they were doing to seek the face of the lord not just for themselves but for others they sought the face of the lord we see david in psalm 27 verse 8 we see king david in psalm 27 verse 8 as he uh, seeks the Lord. He seeks the Lord. He says, When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Psalm 27, verse 8. King David had to seek the face of the Lord on many occasions. When he sinned uh, with Bathsheba, and uh, the prophet revealed to him his sin, David fell on his face, threw on, put on sackcloth and ashes, fasted and mourned and prayed and sought God for deliverance because what David did was uh, he pronounced his own death sentence. He was subject to be stoned to death because he committed adultery. And David cried unto the Lord. He turned his face unto the Lord, and he sought the face of God not only for himself, but David was not just praying for himself, but David was the leader of the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, how many leaders do you know who are going to fast and pray and call upon the name of the Lord and uh, uh, seek the face of God and stop their lying, deceptive ways because the nation is at stake? The, the wealth of the nation, the benefit of the nation, the health of the nation, the posterity of the nation, future generations are at stake. No, no, they still want to play partisan politics point of the finger, the name game, the name blame game, blame, blame is the name of the game, and no, 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 but David put on sackcloth and ashes, ladies and gentlemen, fell on his face before the Lord, and he mourned and cried, and when you read Psalm 51, David says, 
Against thee, O Lord, and against thee only have I sinned. He said, purge me with hyssop. Purge me with hyssop. Remove mine iniquities from me. Uh, do not, do not, do not uh, put thy servant away in anger. David cried unto the Lord. It's that kind of uh, 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 turning to God that changes households, ladies and gentlemen, changes marriages, changes households. Uh, if your marriage isn't going right, then seek the face of the Lord. Fast and pray. Get on your face before the Lord about your marriage. Get on your face before the Lord about your children. Get on the face before the Lord about your job. Get on your face before the Lord about your church fellowship. Get on your face before the Lord about your nation uh, and watch what God will do. We see uh, God speaking to King Solomon, David's son, in Second Chronicles 7, 14. And God said to Solomon, if my people, meaning the people who are called by his name, not only Old Testament people, but that brings us into the New Testament, the people who are called by the name of the Lord, Christians, we are followers of Jesus Christ. True Christians have been born again by the Spirit of God. We didn't join the church. We didn't join a movement. We committed our lives to Jesus Christ. And the Lord says to us, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I will uh, heal their land. And so uh, God knows what's going on. He sees what's going on. He knows what's going on. And God wants to intervene, but God is waiting for his people to humble ourselves. You all listen now. He's waiting for his people to humble ourselves. We need to humble ourselves and cry out unto the Lord. We've got to forgive those who have harmed us, those who hate us. We've got to cry out to the Lord for mercy and grace, not only for ourselves, but for all people. Then we see Habakkuk. Habakkuk, Habakkuk uh, is, uh, uh, I find myself today in the same situation where Habakkuk was. Habakkuk was wondering, Lord, what is going to happen to this nation? We see when Habakkuk opens up his, uh, his, his uh, uh, testimony, he says the burden that was on Habakkuk. Lord, what is going to happen to this nation? And, and Habakkuk said, I'm going to wait until God speaks to me. I'm going to stand on my guard post. I'm going to situate myself on the watchtower. And I'm going to wait until the Lord says something to me when he reproves me. And that was Habakkuk's position as he interceded, ladies and gentlemen. He stood in the gap for a nation. What a great prophet. What a man of God. He said, I'm going to wait until you speak to me when you reprove me because I know the word of reproof is coming. I know you're going to chastise me with your word. And then God told Habakkuk what the burden was, what was going to happen to Israel, what was going to happen to uh, 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 his nation. God said, yes, there will be a revival and I will save a remnant. Uh, but, but the people will be carried away. They're going to be destroyed because of their they're, they're turning their backs to me. They, the people no longer want me in their lives. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, in, in America today and in this world, we're just where Habakkuk was with Israel in his time in the 8th century B.C. Uh, the people have turned their backs on God. The people no longer want God around. Uh, they, they only want God for his blessings, but they don't want to obey God and uh in the 8th century B.C., Israel was surrounded by lying, deceiving, destructive leaders who were out to keep themselves in office, to please themselves. Uh, even the priests were corrupt. The priests uh, uh, committed sodomy and adultery, and, and the priests uh, committed uh, uh, sexual sins with, with the witches and, and with, the, with the whores, and, and uh, Israel, was, Israel was a mess. Israel was a mess, and so we see, we see that we're in the same situation, and God says, if my people, 
Same thing he said to uh, 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 Solomon. He's saying the same thing to these prophets over and over again. If the people who are called by my name will repent. Ladies and gentlemen, America is under judgment. The church is under judgment. When, when the churches are permitted to reassemble, and we see some assembling today. We see some uh, never did stop assembling. Uh, we see the numbers going up for the coronavirus. But when it's all over, ladies and gentlemen, when it's all over, God's going to look for those who, who have humbled themselves, the people who have turned to God, the people who are willing to take their instructions for the Lord. The Bible says that we are all priests. We are all priests before God. The Bible tells us that because we have, and Peter writes this in, in, in 1 Peter, we're, we're a, a priesthood of all believers. Every believer is a priest before God. We can go before God. We can speak to him. We can stand in behalf of others. We can seek God for the nation, for our families. We can wait on the Lord. We can trust God for direction, for correction, uh, for instruction, for healing, for deliverance. And God is waiting for people to come to him. He's waiting, ladies and gentlemen. He knows what's going on. He knows what the devil is doing. He knows people are dying. And, and, it, and God said to me when I was in prayer this morning, it is not going to get any better because this coronavirus has not been convincing. And, and that kind of scared me, ladies and gentlemen, when the Lord said this coronavirus is not convincing. It hasn't convinced many people to turn from their wicked ways. People are going to go back to their sin. And they're, after this coronavirus is over, they're going to go back to uh, living in adultery. Homosexuals are still going to be uh, homosexual. Uh, uh, lesbians are still going to be lesbians. Uh, 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 Pastors are still going to be lying to their congregations. Money-grabbing churches are still going to try to deceive people. The government's going to still be lying and corrupt, corrupting unless the people's hearts are turned to God. Unless the people's hearts turn to God. And God said this coronavirus is not convincing. So there must be other things coming down the pike, ladies and gentlemen. And if this coronavirus has not convinced you to repent of your sins, there's something better than corona coming, or worse, there's something more. And so I say to you, repent now. Repent now. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look at Hezekiah. We could talk about Jeremiah. We could talk about Hosea. We could talk about other uh, prophets who warned the people to repent. But let's look at Hezekiah. Dr. Gene Bratton read this scripture earlier. And uh, in 2 Kings chapter 20, 1 through 11, in those days Hezekiah was sick unto death. His number was up. Hezekiah was one of the five good kings of Judah. All of the 20 kings of the northern kingdom Israel were corrupt. Of the 22, 23 kings in Judah, five or six of them were good. Hezekiah was one of them. And he was sick unto death, the Bible says. And the prophet Isaiah came to him, to him and said, because God sent Isaiah to visit Hezekiah. And the prophet said to him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die, and not live. Ladies and gentlemen, I have lost more friends this year than I have in all my life. I mean, a lot of my friends and people I know are dropping like flies. And, 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 and many of them did not get this warning that Hezekiah received. Get your house in order, for you're going to die. Ladies and gentlemen, death does not send you an invitation to say, hey, I'm going to be visiting you next Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And so uh, if you're around, uh, I'd like to take you with me. Uh, death is not polite like that. But God gives us warning every day, ladies and gentlemen. He says, call unto me and I will answer thee. The Bible teaches us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have 
everlasting life. The Bible teaches us over and over and over again that God is long-suffering, not willing that any of us should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants us to go with him to heaven. And there are some of you out there, you're still saying, well, I'm saved. I gave my life to Jesus. I'm baptized. I'm good. No, you're not good. No, you're not. Baptism does not save you. And I'll preach that until I can't preach anymore. Baptism does not save you. Baptism takes a, a dry sinner and makes you into a wet sinner. Unless your heart has been changed, unless you've confessed your sins and have repented. And repentance means unless you have made up your mind, you are not going to do that stuff anymore, and you turn from it and walk away from it and don't, and don't go back to it. Unless you're like... <clears throat> You're not like the pig that uh, wallows in its own slop. You're not like the dog that goes back and eats its own vomit. And that's what a lot of Christians are doing. They confess Jesus when things are, are not going well, and then they get that bad boy off their back, they get that monkey off their back, and then when things get right, they go back to smoking those loaded cigars. They go back to smoking that, drinking that liquor. They go back to... Uh, 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 chasing uh, somebody else's spouse. Uh, 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 the homosexuals uh, come out of the closet even more, and, 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 and uh, governments even endorse same-sex marriage. I mean, uh, once people get the bad boy off their back, they go back to doing whatever they want to do. But God is seeking for people who are willing to turn their lives around and live holy and righteousness. The Bible says holiness without which no man shall see God. And so wake up, people. Wake up. Wake up while there is time because tick-tock, 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 the clock is running. The clock is running. Tick-tock, tick-tock, the clock is running, and we're running out of time. And and. Many of the people that I know who have died this year, I'm not their judge, but many of them did not take the time out to get right with God. Ladies and gentlemen, you may judge me on that. You may not like what I just said, but many of the people who are dying have not taken the time out to get right with God because many of them don't think this gospel is for real. It's a joke. It's a big joke. Just go to church. You'll be all right. Go to church on Sunday. Then you can do. You can live like hell Monday through Saturday, and that's the way most people live. But Jesus said you must be born again. If you're not born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. And so Satan has blinded a lot of people to the truth. So let's look at Hezekiah. When God told him, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live, verse 2 says, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Hezekiah did not call a, a meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He did not call. I mean, he did not, did not call Dr. Fauci. Fauci. He did not call Dr. Burks. He did not call uh, 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 Chuck Schumer. He did not call uh, uh, Pelosi to get some votes. He did not call. What y'all think about this? He did not call. Uh, 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 Dr. Sanjay Gupta, uh, give me your take on this. No, Hezekiah knew. He knew that it was God speaking to him, and Hezekiah knew that he had to do something. And, and not only was Hezekiah's life at stake, but the whole kingdom of Israel was at stake. The whole kingdom of Israel. The Assyrians were attacking Sennacherib and the Assyrians were attacking, getting ready to surround Jerusalem. And, and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of souls were at stake, ladies and gentlemen. Not just Hezekiah, but God spoke to the king because the king was the leader. The king had a responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you this. What do you think would happen in this nation if we wake up in a short while and find there's no longer a king sitting in the White House. Now, a lot of you would probably say, hallelujah, rejoice. But ladies and gentlemen, if there's no king in the White House and we wake up one morning and the king is gone, suddenly uh, he was taken at night. Ladies and gentlemen, 
with the climate in this nation, with the ignorance in this nation, with the fact that most people in this nation have made uh, the Republican Party their God or the Democratic Party their God, there will be total chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, what would happen? What do you, what, what do you think would happen if you woke up uh, one morning soon and there's war? The Chinese have decided they're going to invade America. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you the number of visions I've had of China flying over the United States, paratroopers dropping on this nation, and the many, many other prophets who have seen uh, uh, foreigners, planes flying over America, dropping soldiers and, and, and soldiers, rounding up people in America. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to wake up and stay woke. And so Hezekiah, when, when, when Isaiah came to his house, and told him, get your house in order. You're going to die, the Lord says. Hezekiah immediately, he forgot about uh, his political party. Uh, he, he forgot about uh, 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 kissing up to the leader of the Senate. He forgot about all those people he owed favors to. He turned his face to the wall. The Bible says he turned. I know some of you all don't like this preaching. Because I'm preaching against the king that's sitting in the White House. Uh, and some of y'all worship him. Some of y'all think he's God. He is not God. He's not God. And it's time for us to wake up and pray for him that he get saved, that he get delivered. And so Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He shut out everybody and everything. His main objective was to get into the presence of God and to repent and humble himself. And I'm preaching to many people today, you're too proud to humble yourself. Say amen, Anthony Townsend. Some, some of you are <laughs> too proud to, Amen. Some of you are too proud to humble yourself. Say amen, Pastor Sam Gale. Some of y'all are too proud. Say amen, Melanie Bias. They're too proud to humble themselves before the Lord. They want to they wanna look religious. But ladies and gentlemen, when God says, your number's up, this is it. Get your house in order. Get your things ordered because you're going to die. Very few people hear that. Most people, I mean, they just leave it, zip, zoom, they're gone have no opportunity to get things right. Oh, well, the preachers are going to preach you into heaven. The preachers have a heaven for you. The, pre the pastors have a heaven for you, especially if you were a good tither. <laughs> Come on, Melanie. Especially if you were a good tither, you gave your money, you supported the church, you helped build the church, you were there with your checks and, and your money orders and your cash. Anytime they needed something, you, you gave it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's some pastor going to put you into his heaven. Oh, right. she, was, she, was, she was a good steward, a good servant of the church, a good trustee, uh, a good missionary. Uh, 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 they didn't come any better. I mean, they got a heaven to put you in. But, see, I don't want to go to the preacher's heaven. Come on, somebody. Right. I don't want to go to the preacher's heaven, Dr. Gene Bratton. Mm -hmm. I, I don't Amen. want some preacher to have to put me in heaven because my Bible tells me that uh, uh, once you're in hell, there is no return. Mm -hmm. Once you reach right. that place, there is no return. Jesus gave us a, an, illustra an illustration. The, the rich man, uh, 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 he was in hell in torment. And he saw uh, Lazarus, the man whom he uh, ignored and persecuted and abused every day. The, the, the poor man Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom, meaning he was in paradise. And, and the rich man said, oh, 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 uh, uh, send Lazarus with uh, 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 some water. Tell him to come and put some water on my tongue because it's hot down here. I'm tormented in this place. And and and, and 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 send Lazarus to my brothers and sisters because uh, they won't believe anybody. But if someone from the dead went back and told them, they believe. Mm -hmm. And Abraham said, No, they wouldn't believe even if someone rose from the dead. 
Just like mm -hmm. some of y'all won't believe, cause, and even Jesus rose from the dead, and he's speaking to you through the Holy Ghost. But some of you still won't believe. You're stubborn. Amen. Don't go to hell because you're stubborn. Mm -hmm. Don't go to hell because you, you, you're scared of what your mama might think, or your husband might think, or your children might think, or your job might think, or your homies might think. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going to bust hell wide open, and you're going to be there with them if you don't wake up. <laughs> and repent. Don't go to hell because your president's playing politics with you. Y'all folks in Georgia are doing a great job, he's saying. Now, just two weeks ago, he was condemning the governor of Georgia. Y'all folks in Georgia, yep. you said, you're showing America how to get back out there. Ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen, don't fall for me. Don't fall for me, okie doke. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, let him go out there. Let him go to uh, the, the North Georgia Mall. Let him go to the beach. Let him go to the Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, don't fall for the okie doke. <laughs> Let him go to First Baptist and visit with Charles Stanley. Let mm -hmm. him go. Let him go to First Baptist in Dallas and visit with Bob Jeffress. But he said, no, y'all are going out there. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. wake up. Hezekiah woke up. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. And he cried unto the Lord. And he prayed. And he prayed. And he repented. And he turned to the Lord. He sought the face of God. He sought the face of God. And Isaiah was walking down the path from the king's palace. And Isaiah had not cleared the property. When God spoke to Isaiah and said, go back. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. He said, turn again. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And then Isaiah took a lump of figs and laid it on that cancer, that was on Hezekiah's body. And Hezekiah, uh, uh, he, he asked God for a sign. Lord, if, if you're going to do this, give me a sign. And God said, what sign shall you, you, you look for? And Hezekiah said, well, when on the sundial, now the sundial is the way they to told time. On the sundial, the dial goes forward. Make it go back 10 degrees. Make it go back 10 degrees. And God did exactly that. Verse 11, And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. And ladies and gentlemen, God can turn back the hands of the time in your life. And he can add to your life. You're not too far gone. There's not a person listening to me today you are not too far gone that you cannot turn around. You cannot be saved. You cannot be delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this coronavirus is not greater than the Holy Ghost. There is no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. God is looking for a people who will walk in holiness and righteousness. Well, Pastor Card, I sinned so much, I don't think God, God wants to heal me. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> if you don't know what you're saying, just please, please, shut up. And I'm saying to a lot of you preachers out there, y'all just need to shut up. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds ignorant, but y'all just need to shut up. Because if it ain't gospel, mm -hmm. don't say it. If it ain't the gospel, don't say it. I don't care what so-and-so thinks. I don't care what the bishop thinks. Who, uh, who is the bishop? 
I don't care what the bishop thinks. If the bishop's thoughts are contrary to the word of God, bishop, you too. Shut up. Give me the word of God. Give me Jesus. Give me... Give me a word. God said for me today to give you a word. Tell the people. Turn their face to me. Seek my face. Seek my face. God has given us a priority, ladies and gentlemen. Seek my face. Not what the politicians are saying. Not what your mayor is saying. Not what your governor is saying. Seek my face and every one of you has an opportunity to come to God on a one-on-one -on -one. Jesus said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me I am meek and lowly in heart ye shall find rest unto your soul and God said through Jeremiah uh, Call on me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Seek my face. Seek my face, the Lord says. Seek my face. Praise God. I've given to you what the Lord has given unto me, ladies and gentlemen. I've given unto you what the Lord has given unto me. Now, seek his face. Don't be afraid of the coronavirus. Don't be afraid of anything. Don't be afraid. God and you make a majority. When you put your trust in the Lord, God will fight for you. He will deliver you. But God is seeking for a people who will trust him. The Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart are Hearts are perfect toward him. That means if your heart is seeking God, your heart is to God, you're open to the Holy Spirit, you're open to the word of God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to join us every Wednesday night for a Bible study. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about this and showing how how to get closer to God and, and, and look at the amazing things that God has done as we look at our... Uh, um, our scripture in our scripture this week, as we look at second, we're, we're in the book of uh, First Kings, and we ask, invite you to come and be a part of that, and get into the Word. You'll be amazed at what God will reveal to you when you study His Word. Father God, we thank you, bless you, praise you, and honor you. Lord God, I thank you for your Word to us today. We honor you, Holy Spirit. Father, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. Deliver us, God. We repent of all of our sins and we turn from our evil ways. We turn our face to the wall and we seek your face, God. We seek your face. We seek you, Lord. Help us, God, to seek you. And as your word says, seek the Lord continuously. Help us to seek you continuously, not just for the moment, but continuously, Lord, and bless us. Bless your people. Pour out your anointing upon them. Heal and deliver. Save today and set free. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church amen. say amen. Let the amen. church say amen. We're going to end our recording. We're going to end the recording. But if uh, you uh, would like to uh, get more uh, information, you have questions for me, anything you'd like to know, and if I can help you, give me a call, 404-205-1101, that's 404-205-1101, or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or hit me up on Facebook, and then I'll show you how we can get into a private conversation, and uh, or visit the website. Praise God. You all be strong in the Lord in Kenya, Sweden, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Jamaica, England, Canada, the nations. God bless you.